guys for posting other colors. Color Guard Forward March. Color Guard Walt. Color Guard, please post your colors. Color guard halt. Color guard please. Thank you, Union ABC. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church as we observe National Scout Sunday. The Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, and Cub Scouts who are sponsored by this church would like to thank you for helping to make our Scout program so successful. We'd also like to thank all the adult leaders who volunteer their time to work with the Scouts. Finally, we give thanks to God who gives us life and in whose name we gather today. If you're watching online via Facebook this morning, please say hello in the comment section and let us know you're here. If you are new today, you can learn more about our church on our website at firstpresbyterian.church. As we begin our worship, let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose grace your servants are enabled to fight the good fight of faith and ever prove victorious, we humbly ask you to inspire us so we may give our hearts to you and exercise our wills on your behalf. Help us to think wisely, to speak rightly, to resolve bravely, to act kindly, and to live purely. Bless us in body and soul, and make us a blessing to our neighbors. Whether at home or abroad, may we ever seek the extension of your kingdom. Let the assurance of your presence save us from sinning, strengthen us in life, and comfort us in death. O Lord our God, accept this prayer we pray to you. Amen. together as we say our prayer of confession, which is composed by a scout leader in church and a faith healer. You can find the word printed in your bulletin or on the screens in front of you. The scout is Christ over. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we have failed to keep our promises to you and have been dishonest to others. A 
scout is loyal. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we have failed you. A scout is helpful. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we have put ourselves before others or done kindness with the expectation of something in return. A scout is friendly. Forgive us, Lord, for the times when we have not sought to understand our brothers and sisters. In Christ, I have not respected those beliefs or names different than our own. A scout is courteous. Forgive us, Lord, for the many times we have been indifferent to others. A scout is kind. Forgive us, Lord, for the time we have been indifferent to those around us and not treated our neighbors as ourselves. A scout is obedient. Forgive us, Lord, for our disobedience to you and falling short of your expectations. A scout is cheerful. Forgive us, Lord, for our pessimism and lack of hope, failing to ensure the happiness of others and serving you after our duty. A scout is thrifty. Forgive us, Lord, for our wastefulness and our extravagance. A scout is brave. Forgive us, Lord, when we only have been fearful or anxious in the face of doubt or hardship. A scout is clay. Forgive us, Lord, for letting you down when we turn our bodies as temples of the Holy Spirit. A scout is reverent. Forgive us, Lord, for our reverence and disrespect towards you. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The past is left behind. Everything has become fresh and new. Friends, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us be at peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Our scripture reading today is Exodus chapter 43, verse 18, and verses 20 through 21. You can find this passage in your pew Bibles on page 60. So God let the people find the roundabout way of life of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of the land of Egypt to carry it back. They set out from Succoth and camped at Ephraim. On the edge of the wilderness. The Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day to keep them along the way and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light so that they might travel by day and by night. Our second scripture reading is from Genesis chapter 9, verses 12 to 15. You can find this passage in your few Bibles on page 7. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I may, that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my covenant cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. When I bring the clouds over the earth and the dove is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. Let us pray. God, please prepare our hearts and minds to receive your word as a way unto our feet and a light unto our steps. Amen. Hello. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ray Bob. I'm Scott Richard Two, and today I will be living, delivering this sermon. So, Every scout who has spent any time camping in the woods knows the difference between a grizzly bear and a black bear. See, grizzly bears are far more dangerous than the two, but there are certain ways you can protect yourself against bears. First being, wearing small bells on your clothing to avoid your presence, carrying a small can of pepper spray for defense, and it's important to know the difference between black bear droppings and grizzly bear droppings. You see, black bear droppings, they're small, little berries, a lot of other vegetation, well, grizzly bear droppings are much larger, and they're filled with little bells that smell like pepper spray. <laughs> Today, I'd like to talk to you about two things that are pretty, pretty important in the life of a scout. The first is a compass, like this one. 
In order to advance to the second class rank in scouting, I had to learn how to use this compass to navigate, to find a way that never got lost in the woods. Funny story, when my mom was pregnant with me about two months before I made my grand entrance into the world, my dad went on a hiking trip with his two brothers in the Appalachian Mountains, and long story short, they got lost. My dad's cell phone happened to butt my mom right as she overheard them looking at the pad and trying to determine whether they were looking at black bear droppings or grizzly bear droppings. A compass can help you find your way when you get lost in the woods. But what do you use when you what do you use to help you find your way when you've lost your path in life? When you find yourself somewhere that you never planned on or even wanted to be. See, a funny thing about being lost is that frequently you find out there are more than four directions. In our scripture reading from Exodus, we read that the Israelites took the roundabout way through the wilderness, and I'm pretty sure that roundabout is the ancient Hebrew word for completely lost. But how, how did they find their way? See, compasses like this one hadn't been invented yet. We also didn't have Siri or Alexa or Google Maps for that matter at all. But verse 21 says that the Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them along the way, and a pillar of fire by night to give them light so that they might travel by day and by night. In other words, they had the biggest, brightest, most accurate navigational system that the world has ever seen. And if you read the rest of the book, you find that it's still took them 40 years to reach their destination. But if you do read the rest of the book, you'll also find that along the way that you're stronger, more faithful, closer to God, and closer to each other. Sometimes it's okay to feel a little bit lost on a camping trip, on a road trip, or even finding your way through life. Whatever your life comes is, whether it's your faith or your values or your instincts or your education, it's important that you know that and that you have it with you when you wander off the beaten path. The second thing I'd like to talk to you about today is rainbows. See, rainbows can also surprisingly help you navigate. So rainbows, they'll only appear when the sun is behind you and there is rain in the front of you. So, in the morning, rainbows are in the west. And in the evening, they're in the east. But rainbows, unlike compasses, force you to look up and remind us that there's more to life than just the path at our feet. When you see a rainbow, you stop. You look up and you stare in wonder and amazement. Rainbows almost always bring a smile to your face. Scouts are taught to value and appreciate the great outdoors. And during my almost nine years as a scout now, I've had the opportunity to see shimmering rainbows, crystal blue oceans, white sandy beaches, dark brooding forests, and misty mountains. All of God's creation is a beautiful gift and a promise. And Genesis, God has known that the rainbow is the sign of a covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. And you know, I think it's a promise that goes both ways. God creates and promises all of these wonders for us, and in turn, we promise to take care of them, to appreciate them, and to share them with everyone. So, compasses and rainbows, one helps you find your way along the path. The other reminds you that God is with you on the path. One will guide you, the other will inspire you. Once for times you wander, and the other fills you with wonder. What is your compass? What is your rainbow? And what are you waiting for? It's time to get lost in the woods. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for giving us so many different ways to know you, to see you, to experience you in the world we create. When we are lost, please guide us ourselves home. When we are weary, please lift up our eyes to the wonders you have made for us. Inspire us again and help us to be an inspiration to others. Amen. Amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
compass and law are the saints that Girl Scouts endeavor to live by. Their words are grounded in the values of Christianity and all major religious traditions. Please join me as we say the Girl Scout Oath together. You'll find the words printed in your bulletins and on the screen in front of you. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, responsible for what I say and do, respect myself and others, respect for authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. And now please wait as together On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to honor my country, to obey the Scout and all. I'll help the people at all times to keep my integrity strong, mentally alert, and morally straight. At this time, we have the pleasure of receiving a new member into the church. Most of you already know Maddie or have seen Maddie. She's been singing with our great band for well over a year now, um, and she's a sophomore at Coronado High School and has expressed her interest in joining the church. On behalf of the session, I present Maddie Spataro, who is being received into membership of our profession of faith. Maddie, you come to us as a member of the greater Christian community. We are one with each other in the family of God. As you join with us in the worship and service of this congregation, I ask you, therefore, to profess the faith of the church in which we were all baptized. So relying upon God's grace, do you turn from evil and renounce its power in the world? If so, please say, I do. I do. Do you profess faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, please say, I do. I do. And will you be a faithful member of this congregation, participating actively and responsibly in its worship and mission through your prayers, gifts, study, and service? If so, please say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Let us pray. God, we thank you for calling us to be your people and for gathering us into the great family of Christ. Especially, we thank you today for bringing Maddie into fellowship with us. Together, may we live in the unity of your Holy Spirit and love one another as we follow in the way of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Welcome, Maddie. Kenya has a membership certificate for you and a new member form, and uh, I invite you to after service. I'm going to be playing and singing, but once that's over, if you want to join us in the narthex or right outside the church so that those who are here today can also recognize you. At this time, we'd like to share some announcements about things that are happening in the life of First Presbyterian Church and ways that you participate. Beginning next week, Pastor Neil will start a new three-part sermon series called All Creatures of Our God and King. Each week, we'll look at some of the animals mentioned in the Book of Job, along with their symbolism and what they can teach us about finding faith in wisdom. Our church would like to express gratitude for the life and long time of longtime church member Ruth Villadu and our sympathy and prayers for her family as they mourn. Ruth passed away last Tuesday, and arrangements to celebrate her life will be announced soon. Finally, we'd like to wish a happy birthday this week to the following people. Nancy Fisk, Nicole Kuyper, Caleb Roddy, James Holt, Christopher Ornelas, Rudy Escajeda, and Ernest Rodeo. Happy birthday.
master of all spells, and with you until we meet again. Amen.